afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. To say farms are complex systems is a bit of an understatement. Along with the care of animals and crops, farmers have to manage land, equipment, and employees. And that's in addition to all the financial responsibilities of running a business. University of Vermont Extension works with beginning farmers to get a handle on all these different systems through a class called holistic management. One of the principles of the class is to write it all down. Record keeping may be the last thing a farmer wants to do at the end of a busy day, but having a written record provides a road map to keep the farm moving in the right direction. Across the fences, Keith Silva has the story of a farmer who took the class and kept a record of what she learned. When the foliage begins to change at Flywheel Farm, Ansel Plug is reminded of what she's learned running a farm business. To start, I'm from like an academic background, so I like planning and I like having um, a sheet of paper with numbers on it to follow. Um, and I very quickly realized <laughs> farming and living, doing, um, dealing with living systems um, that you cannot get too attached to that plan. The farm is owned and operated by Plug and business partner Justin Cody. They raise organically certified vegetables on two acres and market their produce wholesale and at their farm stand. When Cody and Plug started here in 2013, they had little experience and a lot of ideas. When you're starting farming, all you have are ideas, mostly from other people. Like your experience is incre incredibly limited, or at least our experience was incre incredibly limited. I mean, we had a combination of like seven years farming experience when we started and that was only like four different seasons. Plug's approach to record keeping is to keep it simple, manageable, and immediate, especially when the farm is in production. My goal has been to make it as easy as possible because record keeping happens during the season, and I usually have other things I need to be doing. So it's gotta be as simple as, as, simple as it can be. Um, also why it can't happen on my phone my hands are dirty all the time. Like I can't get on my phone. I'm not gonna get on my computer. I try not to use my computer when I'm like in the field. The computer stays in here. I neither have the time nor the brain power to analyze things as they're happening in the season. I can really just like react and like record. We create a master Excel list of all our crops. Did that work? Did that timing work? Did that seed density work. And I was just looking at this schedule the other day and there were like five notes that was like, too early, too cold, <laughs> plant not ready. <laughs> you know, in my head I was probably just, I was like, oh, it's gonna spend 45 days in the greenhouse and then go out. And it turns out, no, it, it, it's not. The spreadsheet is a plan. What should happen? Given the predictable unpredictability of farming, Plug has had to devise an additional and more accurate system to keep up with the changes. When we create the giant production spreadsheet, that sheet, um, it tells me when to plant things and everything, but it's not like a, um, a dead document. Um, it gets photocopied, it gets put in plastic sheaths so that I can write on it and record what actually happened. That's, it's been important to both to mix both the um, recording and the planning parts of the farm together so I can see them at the same time. Um, because in the past, I always have this production sheet and it's on my computer and it's in a nice Excel spreadsheet so I can just look it up the next year, like what did we do last year? And that's great, but that was what we planned to do last year. It doesn't actually reflect what actually happened. And so, um, allowing us to record on top of that sheet has kind of made those record, has turned that into a record keeping device rather than just like a planning device. And having that accurate um, will help me next year in planning for that if I really wanna get those plants out when they're ready and not just wait and wait. Plue credits her decision making to a whole farm planning course that was offered by the University of Vermont Extension New Farmer Project, and the Women's Agricultural Network. Holistic management is a systems approach to farm management. In addition to farm finances and production, holistic management 
factors in environmental, social, and physical sustainability. What Plug learned from the class was to value everything on the farm. We are, the two of us, the labor for the farm, all of the labor. Um, so uh, physical sustainability, health sustainability is also really important. Um, it's why we limit our hours on the farm. And if things don't get done, they don't get done um, within reason. <laughs> um, and then, you know, there's the overall ecological system that we're working under and that sustainability. Um, and that, um, that's almost the easiest one because the plants know what they're doing and the, this ecological system that we're a part of is um, just trucking along doing its thing. And mostly we just need to not get in the way of that and um, yeah, be, be as like, gently involved in that as possible. This management approach extends to Plug's financial record keeping. When we were buying plastic mulch, we could divide the cost of that plastic mulch among all the crops um, that we were growing on plastic mulch. And in that way, kind of see the overall expense. Good morning, this is Mary. Mary Peabody is the director of the Women's Agricultural Network. She teaches students that the goal setting that's central to holistic management has to dovetail with managing risk. You've got a roadmap. The holistic goal is your roadmap. It's where do I want to be? And you've got this pot of gold at the end that you're trying to get to. Okay. Risk management is along the way, what are the kinds of things that I could run into? Where are the potholes going to be on this road? What, are the, <clears throat> what kind of dangers am I going to have to navigate? And how well am I prepared to navigate them? Peabody believes holistic management mitigates risk, provides perspective, and reminds farmers not to get too attached to any decision, which, she admits, is easier said than done. It's hard in a couple of ways. One is, is that it can be hard to make the economics work in a positive way. There's a lot of things that are working against you and that you don't necessarily know, variables that you can't control. The second thing is, is the internal piece, the psychology piece is, you know, sometimes you want very much, like I want those chickens or I want those sheep or I want to grow flowers. And sometimes, you know, the brain's a very powerful thing and it keeps telling you, just keep going in that direction because that's where your heart wants you to go. But if it doesn't work out on paper, then it's probably not going to work out in reality. The tenants of holistic management and her experience as a farmer have taught Ansel Plug that a willingness to adapt to changes can lead to increased happiness and less stress. If we can learn to be adaptive, if we can kind of have a general idea of where we're going and then figure out the way to get there according to, to what's coming at us, um, we end up being happier and more successful. At Flywheel Farm, you could say the more things change, the more Ansel Plug's approach to managing her farm will stay the same. Done. In Woodbury, Vermont, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. And joining me here in the studio is Mary Peabody. As you heard in the video, Mary is the director of the Women's Agricultural Network. She's also an extension specialist in community resources and economic development. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. This is right into the studio. So is holistic management better suited for a beginning farmer or someone who's looking to make a change in their management approach? Right. Well, it's perfect for anybody at any place in their business. But what I always tell my clients is that the earlier you learn it, the fewer bad habits you have to unlearn. So it's easier and a little bit more efficient to learn it at the beginning. Right. The sooner you come in, the better. Mm -hmm. it, so one of the things that the video mentions is if it doesn't work on paper, it's probably not going to work in practice. So how long do you advise farmers to, to wait before moving on if it's something's not working? Yeah. Well, I say, first of all, you know, tinker a little bit with the, the, the small things that you can, maybe change up the markets, change up your pricing structure before you actually finally give up on the product. But at some point in time when it really isn't working, you may have to say, okay, as much as I would love to grow 
X, maybe this isn't really going to work. I have to choose something yeah. else. So um, how does profit really fit into the context of holistic management? So profit is one of those key things. And again, you know, it's like one of the things is you've got to make more money than you spend producing your product. I mean, that's just a basic tenet of business. But holistic management includes all kinds of other things about what's going on in your life and the business and on mm. the land. Um, and in the environment around you. Well, and it was clear that, that taking care of health and psychology and, you know, like taking some time off in the video, it's, and, that, and yes, that's very important. Yeah, isolation and burnout can be really big factors, particularly when you're new to this and you're or maybe transitioning from someplace else and you're not really used to it. And it can take a, quite a toll on you and it can be pretty stressful too. Right. It's a lot of hard work. Yes. <laughs> so, t so talk about why <laughs> holistic management also places emphasis on community relations and social responsibility. Right, so farms are, are participants in the local community and so there has to be a real symbiotic relationship between the community and the farms that support them because mm -hmm. every farmer has neighbors sometimes the neighbors are thrilled to be next door to a farm sometimes not so much so right. that communication piece is always going to be happening and always going to be working and you it's so much easier when your community is on your side right Fabulous. Mary Peabody, Director of the Women's Agricultural Network. Um, thank you for joining us and yeah. for your wonderful work. So and welcome. to uh, get more information about holistic management and other classes offered by UVM Extension's Women's Agricultural Network, visit the website at uvm.edu slash WAGN or call 802-476-2003. And that's our program for today. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Thank you.